Stocks were kind of boring this week with the S&P 500 down just 0.1%. However, over in Bitcoin land, it pulled back nearly 10%, dropping from its high just over $31,000 and finding support just above $27,000. So as we head into the end of April, what's next for stocks and Bitcoin? And why is it some people are predicting Bitcoin 10,000 and S&P 3,000? First, let's talk about the stock market. Bulls like Jim Cramer from Mad Money believe that everybody's being too bearish and that we're actually starting a new bull market with new higher highs coming this year for the S&P 500 and other stocks. Cramer and others believe that the Fed has been successful in its fight against inflation and that what we'll see from here is what's called a soft landing, and that we will see a mild recession at worst or no recession at all. In fact, Kathy Wood, the CEO of ARK Invest, came out and gave a price target of Tesla, one of her favorite stocks, of $2,000 a share by 2027. And just for a little update, Tesla's currently trading at $160, so that's nearly a 12x from current prices. However, the bears have a lot of catalysts on the horizon too. First off, we have the Federal Reserve meeting on May 3rd, where it's expected expected that the Fed will raise the interest rate by another quarter of a percent, and if it does that, stocks will likely fall off. Additionally, even if the Fed doesn't hike and instead just pauses, if they don't talk about when they're going to do cuts, that's also bearish for the markets. So the first week of May isn't looking too hot. As we head through May, we're going to see more debate about the debt ceiling. And even though Congress has never allowed the United States to default on one of its debt payments, every single time the debt ceiling comes up, the market doesn't have it priced in, and we usually see a sell-off of more than 10%. Finally, one of my favorite analysts, David Rosenberg, was on the Macro Voices podcast this week, and he said he thinks that the market has just entered into a recession right now, and that the U.S. economy is about to get hit hard. In fact, he doesn't just believe that last October's lows in the S&P aren't going to hold. He's giving a price target of $3,000 for the S&P 500, and that's just based on the previous recession multiples and the earnings we can expect. As for me, it's like I always say, I am always long, so I don't worry about the bull case scenario. I'm currently 66% invested. I'm always looking out for the bear case scenario, and it doesn't make me want to panic and sell everything. It just makes me come up with a plan of how much I'm going to buy and where for each of my positions. Over in Bitcoin, we did see quite a bit of a pullback in Bitcoin this week. It dropped from its high 13.1% before finding support down here at $26,999. When you're just looking at Bitcoin, on a standard chart, it's not really easy to figure out where there might be technical support. And a lot of people like to refer to the fundamentals. Personally, I ignore the fundamentals in Bitcoin. It has been both bullish and bearish when the fundamentals have been good over the years that I've been in it. So it just doesn't seem to have any relevance to which way it's going to go. If we look at my chart, you can see things get a lot more busy because I use a lot of different indicators. For one thing, you can see that this green line here is the 50-day moving average. Now, it turns out that Bitcoin and most cryptocurrencies seem to respect the simple moving average instead of the exponential moving average. When it comes to stocks, most people use the AMA, but I use the simple moving average with Bitcoin because that just seems to be what happens. And as you can see, it's finding support above the 50-day moving average right now. A lot of bulls say that it's going to bounce off that 50-day support and then retest 30,000 or even higher. The bulls believe we're in another bull market for Bitcoin and that it will see new highs sometime this year. For me, I've always found that being more bearish on Bitcoin tends to be safer because whenever the bulls get really excited, I even had somebody comment on Twitter and tell me that it's never going below $20,000 this year. That's when I get nervous. In 2018, the bulls used to say that it would never go down below $6,000. And then in November of 2018, Bitcoin got cut in half and went all the way down to 3130. So anything is possible in this sector. Additionally, the technicals only work until they don't. This is a highly manipulated sector. There's a lot of regulation that doesn't apply here. Accordingly, the whales, the people who own the most Bitcoin, will push the price down or push it up. So your technicals will work until they decide that they won't. If the whales want to push Bitcoin down to a key level support, which many bears say is $10,000, that's where it's going to go. It doesn't matter what kind of support levels your technical analysis says it has. It will not hold. If you're new to Bitcoin and you want to find ways where you might be able to find support, there are a few ways of doing it. 
first off, you can use something called Fibonacci retracement, where you draw from the low of a move to the high of the move, and you can see that you get key levels of support where Bitcoin might find support again as it pulls back. Additionally, if you're on TradingView, you can add moving averages, which is another way of finding support. Just go up to the indicators, type in moving averages, and you'll see that it comes up. You can choose between the exponential or the simple, and I always go with the simple when it comes to Bitcoin. When you add it to the chart, you can see that you've got an MA of nine. That means it's a nine point moving average. If you're looking at the daily, it's taking an average of the last nine days. One of the key moving averages is the 50 day. So all you have to do is hit the gear, switch the length to 50. And now the line that's on the chart will actually show you the 50 day moving average. You can see it here in blue. Additionally, I found that Bitcoin, oddly enough, respects parallel channels. So if you go to your trend line tools and go down to parallel channel, what you you do is you just draw a line from the top of a move, find a trend that you think is going to provide consistent resistance into the future, and then draw it down to the bottom of a move. And you can see that strangely enough, Bitcoin respects these different kinds of parallel channels. This is incredibly simple technical analysis, but for some reason, crypto seems to respect it. For me, when it comes to Bitcoin, it's like I said, I'd rather have a really small position that ends up being incredibly profitable than be all in and have it get cut in half. So I'm always really conservative when I enter into Bitcoin. If you're not a trader and you don't want to take on a lot of risk, believe it or not, another thing I do is I have the Gemini MasterCard. It pays the rewards in any cryptocurrency you want from the Gemini platform. For me, I pick Bitcoin and it pays me back 1% anywhere that I buy, 2% in groceries and restaurants, 3% in other places, and even 10% on gas. Since the credit card has no annual fee, I'm earning these rewards for free. So it makes no sense for me not to. I collect the Bitcoin over time. Once I have enough, I transfer it off the platform onto a cold wallet, and then I rinse and repeat. If you're interested in applying for the MasterCard, I will put a referral link in the show notes, but I'm not being sponsored by this. It's actually something I just use myself. As for me, what I see for Bitcoin, well, I think we're going to see a bit more of a pullback. It jumped almost 62% from its bottom in March to its high in April. I think we could see at least a pullback to the 50% retracement, which is down here at $25,200 or around there. After that, you could see that we have key levels of support down at the $23,950 level and another key level of support down here at $22,000 even. After that, I'd go back in the past and I'd find support maybe around here at $20,650 or around there and then have $19,300 as another buy. All that being said, I'm not planning on having the majority of my allocation in Bitcoin, even if it pulls back to 19300 for a long shot. I honestly do believe we could see a pullback to $10,000. If there is an epic sell-off that affects the stock market, Bitcoin is still a risk asset. And it's like they say, people don't sell what they want to, people sell what they can. So I think Bitcoin will pull back if the S&P 500 does. And if the S&P gets back down to 3000 the $15,000 low for Bitcoin is likely not going to hold. From here, let's take a look at the winners and losers in my investments in play portfolio and my speculation in play portfolio. Over in the investments in play, this week's winner was Schwab with a 5.99% gain. Given that the rest of the market was relatively flat, that's a pretty impressive gain. But then you have to remember that Schwab got beaten up pretty hard during the regional bank crisis as people started to exhibit some kinds of concerns when it came to Schwab's own banking practices. This week's loser in investments in play was Coinbase, which dropped 15. 49%. Longtime viewers of my channel might remember that Coinbase was the winner last week on the back of Bitcoin reaching 31,000. So it only makes sense that when Bitcoin sells off significantly, so does Coinbase. Over in speculation and play, this week's winner was DraftKings, which popped 14.67%. There's a lot of bullish sentiment in the sports betting plays right now, and DraftKings really benefited from it. Going into earnings, a lot of the bulls think that DraftKings is going to blow the cover off the ball, so it's possible that there's more upside in store for this week's winner. This week's loser was Danimer Scientific, which pulled back 10.02% on really no news. But when you see that Danimer's up 104.44% year-to-date, this is probably just just profit taking and just a standard correction or pullback. I did take profits in Lyft this week in my speculation and play portfolio on April 17th at $10.45. Even though this only locked in gains of 7.18% on shares that I bought for $9.75 when I opened the position on March 2nd, 
Lyft ended up pulling back much further than I anticipated it would, so I wanted to reduce some of my exposure in case it makes a test for its lows. This sale lowered my per share cost 3.61% from $9.70 to $9.45, and from here my next buy target is $8.20, slightly above its low from earlier this year, and my next sell target is $13.65, a place where it's found resistance in the past. Over in the pandemic portfolio, I took profits in PepsiCo on April 20th at $185.38. Now, it might seem odd to take profits on a consumer staple, since that's what a lot of people buy when we go into a recession. However, PepsiCo is starting to approach its all-time high, so I'm not eliminating the position. I'm just taking profits into strength. The sale locked in 36.17% in gains on shares that I bought for $136.14 back on January 29th of 2021. It also lowered the position's per share cost a pretty epic 32.41% from $88.03 per share down to $59.50 per share. From here, my next buy target is $161.18, a point of support that PepsiCo saw in 2022. And my next sell target is not until $224.70, which was a price that was calculated using Fibonacci method. In the investments in play portfolio, I took profits in Zoetis, one of my pet care plays this week, on April 21st at $176.46. This locked in 24.21% in gains on shares that I bought for $142.07 back on October 13th of 2022. The sale lowered my per share cost 3.75% percent from $148.42 down to $142.85. From here, my next buy target is the low of 2022, right around $124.74. And my next sell target is at $200.77, just below a point of resistance Zoetis has seen in the past. As we head into next week, it's starting to get really tense as the bulls and bears are trying to decide which way stocks are going to move big next. Plus, with Bitcoin selling off over the weekend, it's hard to know which way the crypto sector is going to go either. So it's going to be really exciting next week. If you want to follow along in any of my moves in my stocks or even my crypto portfolio, check out my website, which is 100% free all the time at getirked.com. Please hit like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out and I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.